Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you are new or welcome back if you are back. Either way, thank you so much for clicking on my video today. Um, if you are new, hi, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they, them. And today's video I have been meaning to make pretty much forever because I used to make these all the time. It's a tutorial on how to make kind of flower crowns and like fairy bra tops but you could totally do this technique on like a belt or a collar or like a pair of like fake wings or like whatever you don't have to do it on like necessarily a bra top that's just what i have a lot of experience in since i used to like make a lot of my own costumes for like little festivals and i always wanted to dress up like a little fairy and like a little sparkly situation so i'll show you some of the ones that i have made in the past for like kind of inspiration purposes but i will also show you how to make Two. One kind of autumnal style bra top and flower crown combo and one more gothy spider purple situation. So let me show you first the ones that I have made in the past. So this is one of my earlier ones. It's quite a lot of fun. I'll see if I can like find old pictures of like the full costumes with these. Um, but basically it's got this like very cool asymmetrical floral pattern. I added um, some glitter. So it's like sparkly. Um, it's got like leaves all on the bottom and like shredded lace and like this hangy pearl thing that was like just some old broken jewelry. Added some like little sparklies. And yeah, they're very kind of like ravey, fairy, um, festival inspired kind of situation. But you could do this in tons of different styles. Um, this one was a attempt in sewing everything down, which I was like, oh, I should like be professional and like sew all the leaves down instead of like hot gluing them. And honestly, just hot glue them. It's way easier. It um, is a lot more efficient and faster. And honestly, like sewing them doesn't provide that much more stability. So I would just recommend for your sake and mine to hot glue them. I'll go more into that and like using fabric glue or hot glue, like just hot glue is easiest. And if you're just using it for like a costume or whatever, I think it's fine. I am definitely not one of those costume purists who thinks that like it has to be constructed to the utmost perfection and uh, professional quality. Like in my opinion, if it's put together with hot glue and tissue paper, but it looks good, who cares, right? Oh yes, this is the fairy crown that kind of goes with those. Um, so for this one, instead of the other ones that I will show you, I just used like an elastic band as the base and then tied little things of ribbon around it and then glued a couple of leaves onto it. Um, so it's very just like ribbony, um, but also has a couple of fake leaves and it's just like a lot of fun and I think it works with both of those because it's green and I lost the original one so whatever it's fine. This one was for a cherry blossom fairy costume that I made. I like documented the whole process of making the top and the crown and the skirt and the wings and everything on uh, my tumblr ages ago. Um, but yes it is very pretty. I'm um, sorry if like it looks terrible in this lighting. Again, I will try to put in better pictures of it, but it's a lot of fun. Just very like floral and gorgeous and has like these like drippy things at the bottom, which I'll show you how to make. It's just like using an old t-shirt with flowers glued on and it's got like a very pretty lace underneath that's like kind of shimmery and it feels all like, yeah, fairy mermaid situation. And this is the flower crown that I made to go with that. It's mostly with these fake twigs, which I will show you where to get those <laughs> and how to use them to make this kind of flower crown for like my kind of gothy one. And it's got these like fake little flower petals and little fake roses and some real moss on there. And it's very fun, very ethereal and pastel and adorable. And I think that also um, these make really cute like wall decor when you're not wearing them. Um, so like bonus points. In my opinion, like the flower crowns are kind of pretty. I always hang them all on my walls for storage and decor purposes. You know, multi-purpose. Now, the two <laughs> that we came here for that I'm actually showing you the tutorial of. The first one is a lot of fun. It's this autumnal kind of one with all these different fake leaves on it. It's got a little fake bird skull and some fake acorns on it and like ribbon straps. And it's just like very cute and autumn fairy kind of feeling and the flower crown that goes with that that I will show you how I made. Super fun. I think it's gorgeous. Um, it makes me very happy when I look at it. It makes me very happy when I wear it. it makes me just feel like the Prince of Autumn or something. Um, so yeah, I like this flower crown a lot, especially because I think it like matches my current hair color quite well. Okay, so the last one I will show is this one. It's very gorgeous purple spider queen kind of inspired with these like fake pearls and fake flowers and fake spiders and all the chains and 
spider charms and yeah it's just like a lot of fun also some black lace on it and fake black leaves and yeah i think it's really cool but so i will show you the tutorial on that one and also how i made the matching flower crown which again we are so tangled in this business hello hair clips might have been a bad choice to wear while filming this video haha -ha. This is the purple one. I think it goes really well with this. And yeah, I think, like I said, flower crowns are just like, I know they were a very like 2014 thing, but in my head, they never went out of style. I've liked them since I was a kid. And like, we would make the like ones out of real flowers at like different like school fairs. I have like very fond memories of that. Um, so being able to make your own, to just wear whenever you want and like using fake flowers so that they like, stay really pretty even though like um if you would do them with real flowers they look really nice um dried out over time like just all kind of dead and spooky like so that's a really cool thing to do as well um but yes this is a very fun project um whether you're doing it for like a costume for like a renaissance fair or a party or halloween or just for fun because honestly it's a lot of fun to prance around in fun clothes that you get to make out of just an old bra and some hot glue guns and some fake flowers and like little things you have around the house so yes if you are interested in learning how to make these items the timestamps will be below as usual and um Let's get into it! So we are starting this project with a random bra from the thrift store. You could just go through your closet and see if there's one you don't really wear anymore or wouldn't mind uh, using in a costume project, or if you're like me and you don't really care. Thrift store is a great space um, to find them, uh, but I understand if people think that's gross. Just leave me alone, okay? Either way, I am taking a bunch of also thrifted leaves and flowers that I found at Valley Village a long time ago, and just using my hot glue gun to glue layers and layers of them down. I'm like vaguely planning the layout before I glue everything down, but honestly it's really hard to mess this up as long as you do it in a somewhat consistent way or like with colors that are somewhat consistent. It generally looks pretty good in my opinion, so I wouldn't stress too much about the layout. If you kind of try it on as you go though your item, um, I would recommend that highly because you can definitely uh, make some adjustments as you are going. Um, if you do find that you don't like the placement of something, my recommendation is to wait for the hot glue to dry and then slowly and gently peel it off. Um, I've done that before and yes it does leave a little mark I guess you could say where you can see where it was taken off however uh, just use a new leaf or flower or something of the sort and put it in its place to add a little bit of extra coverage I'm using some old scrap fabric that used to be a t-shirt and cutting a little uh, square out of it then using a hot glue gun to attach that to the inside of the bra and you could totally use a needle and thread but I am being lazy today and just using my glue gun for everything <laughs> and then I'm just continuing gluing the leaves down the fabric section. I find that adding just like a little panel in the front gives it a really flattering shape and adds more space for you to add visual detail and interest but of course this step is completely optional. You can modify these items as you would like and like I said you don't have to do this project on a piece of clothing even necessarily. You could glue autumn leaves over like a cereal box and have just like a very pretty cool container like you know what I mean it's it's fine anyway I am slowly planning my thing out and using these fake acorns um as like a little dangly thing in the center because you know how sometimes bras have like those pretty little like bows or whatever in the center I was trying to emulate that and I didn't like the original straps so I decided to just cut them off and use some red ribbons in their place. I found that the straps are one thing that you're probably going to want to sew down for reinforcement if you're doing this so if you don't know how to sew um, leave the original straps on I would recommend and then just put the ribbon over them instead of doing what I'm doing right now. Once they've been glued on though I cut them and then use a needle and thread to just add a little bit of extra security to it. Then I'm I'm also using a needle and thread to sew on this resin bird skull charm that I found on AliExpress years ago. I got like a big pack of them that came in like cream and black and I just have found them really really handy. And so yes this autumn fairy has like a little bit of a dark twist with the bird skull I thought. So this is what the bra top looks like when it's done. I think it's really really cute. It's time to make the matching flower crown and I'll show more extended clips of it at the end but for now on to the flower crown. So we are starting out with some floral wire. You can get 
get this at like craft stores and that kind of thing but I find it really helpful because it's nice and flexible but also sturdy and I'm measuring it very loosely around my head you don't want to make it super tight because of all the things you're gonna layer onto it to bulk it up so make sure that it kind of fits you but like not overly tight and then I'm taking this burlap ribbon that I found at the thrift store ages and ages ago and just twisting it around the entire base of the crown. This is just to add a little bit of bulk and give me more surface area to glue stuff down on. It's not necessary and you could use regular ribbon or something like that, but I find burlap ribbon to be extremely helpful because of its like kind of coarseness. I'm not gluing it down at every section, but a couple of sections are helpful. Once the burlap is securely on, I'm using a bunch of moss that I've collected from different walks, but you can also find it at the craft store and the dollar store if there aren't any forests around you that also grow moss. For instance, I found this moss ribbon sort of situation that has wire on the underside of it at the thrift store ages ago, and I'm using it for the first time in this project to kind of bulk up the flower crown since I ran out of moss that I got from my parents' house. <laughs> That's okay though. Again, this step is optional. You could bulk it up with um, something else or not bulk it up at all with moss if you wanted you could just do leaves and I think in the next one I don't use very much moss, but on we go once the moss is all on I wanted to make sure it was nice and secured on there So I'm taking some red ribbon I want it to be in like a contrasting color and also like match the top So I'm just using it to wrap all the way around again This will just help keep the moss on there and provide a little bit of extra structure for the end bits, instead of cutting it short, I'm just letting it dangle. When I was a kid and I would go to these sort of May fairs at my school, there would always be like flower crown making, and I always remember the best part being all the fun, beautiful ribbons <laughs> hanging off of them. Anyway, then I'm taking more leaves and gluing them all around the flower crown. I'm doing a sort of symmetrical pattern, but you don't have to do anything, just do what feels right for you. I do find it helpful to cover both the top side and the underside, make sure you are like trying it on as you go to make sure you like the direction that it is going. But yes, it is going really well so far. Also, if you don't want to wear this, this is just like a cute way to make a wreath, I guess. When I'm not wearing it, I kind of use it as a wreath. Either way, we are continuing gluing down our leaves until we are satisfied. Then I'm using a bunch of thin ribbons and thick orange ribbon that I'm cutting into thin strips to make more of like a flower crown tail situation. Kind of just makes me feel like Rapunzel or something when I have long flowing ribbon hair. So we are going ahead and gluing all these ribbons together so they are kind of in one big ribbon chunk and they are easier to attach to the flower crown. It, if you think it would be easier to tie them on, you can also do that, but this was fine for me. And once they're on, we've got this gorgeous long ribbon crown. Again, totally optional. Do what you will in this situation. This is just like kind of showing some inspiration of how you could do this kind of project. Then I'm taking a bunch of the little pieces from the bouquets. Some of them came with tiny roses or berries. Um, I also have some acorns from my personal collection and I'm just attaching those to add more visual interest. I could have sworn I had a little fake mushroom somewhere and I couldn't find those, but when and if I do, I will add the little fake mushrooms to the crown because I think they would suit it really well. But for now, it's just kind of this cornucopia <laughs> looking thing. Uh, so here is some clips of the flower crown finished. Again, there will be more extended clips at the end, uh, but yes, on to the making of the more spooky gothic um, set. So this process is very much similar as the last. Um, I'm starting by removing the little fake ribbon that came on the top, and then I'm using some lace that I don't remember what project I sewed this off of, and honestly I changed my mind on this later, but you know what? We live and we learn, adding a bunch of lace to the bottom with some hot glue, and then some fake black leaves from these roses from the dollar store, and then adding some cut flower petals from those same dollar store roses to the sides of it. I kind of wanted to do like a color gradient thing, so I'm using like the darker colors near the edges and the lighter colors more near the center. I also think it's really pretty to use different flower petals if you can and get like different colors and textures. Like some of the flowers have these like veiny looking um, leaves and some of them are more ombre and some of them are more solid color and I think it's just fun to have that sort of variation both in color and in texture, layering them 
all together in this kind of symmetrical pattern. You don't have to do it symmetrical, of course, and if you are really worried about messing up a symmetrical design, I would recommend making it purposely asymmetrical. That way you don't have to stress and you can just focus on making a design you think is pretty. Either way, it's really important to try on your piece while you are gluing things down just to make sure you like the direction that it's going in and to make any adjustments that you might find necessary. I have these plastic pearls that I found at the thrift store ages ago and I thought it would be really pretty to line the top. I thought it would almost give like a spider webby effect or something and I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to secure them down. This I could definitely see myself eventually using a bit of needle and thread to secure extra, but for now it's been okay with just the hot glue. I find fake plastic pearls way more useful to use than glass pearls because they're way more lightweight and way less likely to fall off your clothing. However, if you're doing something where the pearls are going to be dangling, I would recommend looking into glass pearls or something a little heavier. I wanted to show a way to cover up the straps instead of replacing them, so for this I'm just using a bunch of the smaller flower petals and layering them one under the other um, and gluing them all the way up. I think it's a really effective way to hide the original straps and it looks quite nice in my opinion. Then I'm using some old chain that my brother used to use for Warhammer and attaching it to the bottom. Again, probably should have used a jumper ring here, but we are being lazy and working quickly, so I'm just attaching it to both sides of the outside, making another loop and then connecting it in the center so it's sort of a V-shape, and then doing one loop below the both of those. So we've got this very like gorgeous drippy situation. Then I'm taking one long piece of chain and this massive spider charm that I got in a big pack of Halloween charms ages ago and gluing that to the center of the top so it looks like there's kind of a spider hanging down. It hangs right over the belly button ring when I'm wearing it which is fun. And I'm removing the bat that was on there because when I was trying it on it just looked it was a moment. And then I have still this weird lace, so I decided to cover it up with this other lace. I think this used to be on like a t-shirt or something, but regardless, now it's going on this top. And again, could have sewed this, but it's fine. Hot glue works great, and if it looks good, it does not matter if it is put together with hot glue, in my opinion. I am just attaching it all the way around the bottom and all the way around the sides to just add a little extra layer. I thought the green looked really pretty in this top, so I'm adding a little bit more using some on the sides and then just covering the side straps with more leaves and flowers. Then I'm taking these plastic Halloween rings that are from the dollar store, they're little spiders. I spray them with some Mr. Super Clear and then use some silver paint that is also from the dollar store to give them a nice shiny coat. It takes about three layers until they are properly covered and then I cut off the part that makes them the ring, like the little loop at the back, so they are flat and we've got some little spider charms to work with. I add two to the top of each strap and one below that for the total of four spider rings. I thought that this would be like a cool spider forest fairy queen, I don't know. And then I have this little spider web charm that I also got in a pack of Halloween charms ages ago and I thought it would be cool to have a spider web hanging from the center so it looks like the big spider is coming from that web. But it was missing a little something so I'm taking these fake pearls that I got at the dollar store and using a little bit of hot glue to attach those. You could use fabric glue, but the problem with fabric glue I find is that it takes so long to dry and you have to kind of like pin it in place while it dries, which leaves kind of weird bumps when you take the pins out. With hot glue, yes it leaves a little bit of a weird bump, but I think it's just, if you're getting a bump anyway, just do it the quick way, you know what I mean? I'm just kind of doing the pearls in a sporadic pattern and using some bigger ones and some smaller ones um, just to give it a little bit of sparkle. So this is what the top looks like when it is done. Again, I think it looks very, very pretty. I can style it in a couple different ways, which again, will be shown at the end. But for now, here is sort of a peek at the final result, okay? on to making the crown to match this top. So we're starting with our floral wire base again. If you don't have access to floral wire, regular wire would work fine, but I would maybe recommend wrapping it in some ribbon or something to make it a bit more comfortable. You know when you 
take fake flowers off the fake branches and then you're left with these weird plastic branches well that is what i am using to make the second flower crown i thought it would look cool and branchy and kind of witchy so i'm just wrapping all these fake plastic branches around the flower crown yes you could use real branches of course but you know what i had these handy and it was easy so whatever like we did with the burlap and moss, I am using a ribbon to secure the branches all around the flower crown, just making sure the base stays there. And then again, taking more fake flowers and random fake plants off of their little plastic pieces and attaching those all around the flower crown. You can totally leave plastic backings on your flowers and leaves if you want. It does add a little more structure, but it makes them a little more awkward and less like soft in my opinion, so it's honestly up to personal preference. Either way, I'm just doing a bunch of different purples, flowers, leaves, a little bit of green, a little bit of black, and I am placing some ribbon at the back just so I know where I will want my tail to go, where the center is. I have collected so many fake flowers over the years for different projects, so it was a good opportunity to use some of them up. I recommend looking also at your dollar store for fake flowers and the thrift store. If you get them from Michaels, try to use a coupon or something because gosh, they're so expensive there. Craft stores in general, my gosh, they really up their prices, huh? Anyway, thrift store is where it is at for getting craft supplies, if you are able, in my opinion. Regardless, I'm just continuing gluing different flowers down. Unlike on the top where I was using mostly cut petals, on the crown I like to use the full flower with like the little fake center and everything because you don't have to worry about it laying like kind of flat or curved. You can kind of have it look a bit like an explosion. For the tail, I'm using um, kind of this silvery spiderweb tool that I'm cutting into really thin strips to make it look like it's ribbon, as well as this black lace that I'm also using some scissors to cut into very thin strips so it looks like ribbony lace. I think it looks quite gothy and spooky and pretty. Once my bundle of ribbons is put together, I attach it to the center of the flower crown, and we've got, again, this gorgeous tail, in my opinion. You can remove this if you don't like it. Then I have all these fake pearls that I think are for floral arrangements. I found them at the thrift store ages ago, and I love to use them in all sorts of craft projects. They're just a lot of fun, but I'm basically wrapping them around the flower crown if they have wires, and if they don't have wires, I'm just gluing them down. Some of them are double-ended and you can kind of twist them together. Some of them just have a pearl on one end and I just kind of stick them into the flower crown and try to hide the end in the leaves. But regardless, I think it is looking pretty dandy. For the finishing touch, I'm adding a little silver chain to the center and just gluing it down so it has like a tiara kind of effect. And that is the crown done. So now it is time for the fashion show and like showing you how I styled these and stuff. Um, so for the flower crown, you don't have to wear it on its own. You can totally wear it over like a witch hat or like any other kind of spooky hat that you might like or even non-spooky hat. Like if you are a cowboy hat person, do that with a flower crown. I think that would be so cute. Regardless, um, I think it looks really nice either over a hat or on its own. For the top, I think it looks really lovely with underbust corsets or underbust corset looking belts like the one I'm wearing now. Um, I also have this little harnessy top thing that's made of fake leather that provides a little bit of coverage, which I think is great for this sort of thing. And the spiderweb necklace that I found at the thrift store feels very Halloween-y and appropriate <laughs> for the situation. I'm wearing this long black velvet dress also from the thrift store and my favorite stompy boots. And basically this look just makes me feel like a spooky, witchy, forest fairy, um, but kind of in a goth way or something. I don't know. It's a lot of fun. Here is a look of the flower crown without the hat on. I think if you style your hair in pigtails, it can look really pretty um, because it kind of just adds all this big volume to your hair. Um, the bra top can look really pretty with a little capelet sort of thing. I made this one myself and I really enjoy it, uh, but it adds a little bit of coverage. If you don't have a capelet, you can of course use like a scarf as like a sort of shawl and I think it gives a similar effect. Um, and looks really, really pretty. Again, I'm wearing it with an underbust corset. This one is more of like a proper corsety thing. I'm also pairing it with this kind of tutu skirt that has like a little bat pattern at the bottom and mismatched tights and my favorite boots. And this outfit is basically what my dream would have been to wear as a 14 year old. Like this is a love letter to my teenage self that just wanted so badly to be like a spooky fairy goth 
like that was all I wanted <laughs> and um, it's so cool to be able to have um, the ability and money and time and whatever to make and purchase the, the things that make you feel like yourself. It's, oh, I feel really, really lucky to be able to um, get to feel all spooky and pretty and make these kind of things. So yes, that is look number two with this purple fairy top. And yes, just so, so, so happy about that. And I felt like this top required a long hair version um so <laughs> i got my black wig out of my closet and it was time to pose um with that um, as you can see you can also wear the top without an underbust corset i don't think it looks ridiculously immodest but it is more of like a festival look not really like a going to school or going to work kind of look uh, but i still think it's a lot of fun uh for a festival or a halloween costume or if you just like to look glamorous and like a fairy in public I think that it is great look for that too um so yes with this I am pairing it with this dragon necklace that my boyfriend got me at a renaissance fair my black wig um this big bat belt that I think is absolutely amazing um I found it online but it's originally from creepsville I've got these little spiderweb lace gloves just to continue that spiderweb theme I'm wearing two skirts one is a tiny black velvet skirt that I found ages ago when I was on a road trip. And over top of that, I'm wearing a skirt that I made out of a spiderweb fabric, like a spiderweb tablecloth that you get around Halloween. It feels very fun and spooky, and I've layered just my two belts over that. Again, I have a little cape that I'm wearing over top of everything. This one was again DIY'd by me. It's supposed to look like bat wings and I also sewed some little felt bat wings on the back to just give it an extra spooky little look. But yes, this is my other, um, my third and last look with this top. I think it's super pretty and yes, I feel like a spooky fairy queen. It is amazing. The red top, on the other hand, I love it so much. It makes me feel much more like a mischievous fairy than the other one, which makes me much feel much more like elegant and like a fairy queen. This one makes me feel more like an imp or like a little puck sort of character. <laughs> I like it a lot though. It feels a lot of fun. And I've paired the flower crown with these fake antlers that I think are absolutely gorgeous and super cool. Um, the outfit itself consists of the fake antlers, the crown, the top, um, some random bracelets, this giant belt that has pocket attachments, which is my absolute favorite thing about it. It's this faux leather with all these weird buckles and random things that feel very steampunk. And the giant, the giant pockets that are attached to it are the entire reason I got it. I am obsessed with it. For my legwear, I am wearing some fishnets and ripped tights as well as my kind of leg garters and this skirt that I found at the thrift store and then it dyed black, except it didn't really dye black, some of it stayed red, but I think it looks really cool. And I am wearing my big favorite spooky boots. So that is all the outfits. A couple ways to style the purple one for the red one. I just, uh, I thought this outfit was pretty cute and suited the vibe. So yes, I hope that this gave you some inspiration to maybe do some fun DIYs with some fake flowers or leaves or whatever you're feeling. I feel perhaps at this time of year specifically, a lot of autumnal foliage might be going on sale soon. Um, so <laughs> I guess get it while you can. All right, so that is all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed. It was a lot of fun for me to finally get this off my plate and finally show you guys this craft that I have been doing forever, but like it's super easy and like makes like pretty cute things in my opinion. And yeah, I, I think that you guys would have a lot of fun trying it out. So um, yes, I hope, you ha I hope you have a wonderful day or night or whenever you happen to be watching. And if you do end up trying this, I hope it's a lot of fun for you and that you create to your greatest content. And yeah, like I said, you don't even have to do this on clothes if you don't want to. You could do this on like an old jar or an old box and just have like a beautiful, like kind of floral collaged looking decor piece in your room or like an old lamp or like whatever. You don't have to do it on um, the things that I'm showing. Anyway, um, that's all I got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the, your day or night or whatever. Have a good one and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.